Today I want to take a look at the new constraint capabilities built into AutoCAD 2010. You'll find the constraint tools on the parametric tab in the ribbon bar. The constraint tools themselves are quite easy to add. You simply select the constraint you want to add and then click on the objects. For example, let's add two concentric constraints. We want to make that circle concentric to that arc. Let's add another one. Let's add some tangent constraints. We'll also add a horizontal constraint and a parallel constraint. Notice that as I added the constraints, I select the object that I want to remain in its current position and then the object that I want to align with it. There's also a very powerful auto-constrain tool. Auto-constrain lets me assign a number of constraints in a single pass. AutoCAD simply finds any geometry that falls within a certain tolerance and assigns appropriate constraints. Notice that as each constraint was applied, AutoCAD shows an icon in a constraint bar adjacent to that object. If I hover over the icon, AutoCAD highlights the objects that it applies to. I can hide those icons or show them. Let's apply another type of constraint. In this case, let's apply some dimensional constraints. I'm going to apply a radial constraint to that circle. And then I can assign it a radius value. When I create a dimensional constraint, not only can I assign a value, but I can actually set up a formula that creates a relationship between different constraints. For example, if I constrain the outer circle, rather than giving it a value, I can say that it is equal to the radius of the first circle, rad 1, times 1 1.5. Now notice if I change the radius of this circle, the other circle changes as well. We'll undo that. And let's add a couple of other constraints. I'm going to add another radial constraint to this circle. We'll assign it a value of 0.75. And then again, let's assign a value to this one. But we'll say it that rad 3 plus 0.25. Let's add a linear constraint to this line. We'll add an aligned constraint to that line. And we'll add an angular constraint right there. Let's also go back in and add a parallel constraint to those lines. Notice that now that I have these constraints established, I can go in and make modifications to the values and the entire model will update. For example, if I change that value to 85 degrees, the entire object updates. I can also use the new parameters manager tool to see all of those variables that I've established. And if I want to, I can rename them. So for example, rather than calling it rad1, let's call that whole one. Rather than this one being called rad3, we'll change it to whole2. I can also create my own user-defined variable. So we'll create a new one that we'll call rod. And then I can assign, instead of a value of 0.5, we'll say that that's actually rod. And then notice 
that the value updates. And if I change then the expression for rod, let's change that back to a value of 0.5. The model, of course, updates. And if we change the angle from 95 back to an angle of 125, again, the model updates. So as you can see, the parameters manager, the geometric and dimensional constraints are quite a powerful new tool with quite powerful capabilities inside of AutoCAD 2010.